Ni sambal binaka, um, hello, my name is Parmananga and welcome to another devotional. Uh, the title for this week's devotional is um, The Unconditional Word of God. Amen. Um, my sharing today will be taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 22. Um, and just a bit of uh, background in terms of what the story is about. It speaks of a, a prophet who was a diviner. Um, someone who practiced divination, basically looking into, you know, um, trying to foretell the future is what a diviner does. And this is what this particular gentleman, and his name is Balaam, um, who he used to do at the time. And he was well respected um, by the Moabites and the um, um, Midianites at the time. And, you know, uh, it speaks of a king called Balak, who was the king of the Moabites at the time. And, you know, King Balak basically knew of um, Balaam as a prophet, knew what he was, you know, his capabilities in terms of um, foretelling the future. And so he then seeks um, Balaam to curse the nation of Israel um, because he was beginning to see that, you know, from the exodus of Egypt, then they were, um, as they were approaching um, the land where Balak ruled you know they were coming in in um million folds even in, in you know what it is described you know he describes um the nation of israel in uh, numbers chapter 22 verse 2 saying look a people has come from egypt see they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me so he wanted balaam basically to pronounce a curse against the nation of israel because Balaam was known at the time, you know, his word came to pass and the nations, you know, the things that he cursed, you know, were cursed and the things that he blessed were blessed. And so he was, that was what he was looking. He was seeking for Balaam to do. And then we come and I'll read for us from verse 12 to 22. And it just speaks about how, um, you know, Balaam's experience and how we can, and I'll go into how we can learn from that. So from verse 12, um, it reads, And God said to Balaam, this is Numbers chapter 22, verse 12, from verse 12, And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So uh, the king Balak, Balak had sent um, people, had sent elders of Moab and the elders of Midian um, to go and basically seek out Balaam to, you know, to get him to come to King Balak so that he could then pronounce a curse against Israel. But this is what the Lord said to him in verse 12. You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning, verse 13, and said to the princes of Balak, Go back to go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. Mind you, um, Balaam was not an Israelite. You know, he was not a um, uh, a Jew. So he was a diviner. He was not a Jew, um, but he did he did believe in God. Go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Then Balak again sent princes, more numerous and more honorable than they. And they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Ziphar, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will certainly honor you greatly, and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse these people for me. So when Balaam, um, when Balak, you know, found out from the people that he had initially sent out that Balaam wasn't conceding, or Balaam wasn't, he, you know, heeding his request to come, to him and cursed the nation of Israel. He then sent more prominent people, more influential people, uh, if you like, in the eyes of men to go and try and convince um, Balaam to his way of thinking. And then verse 18 says, um, then Balaam answered and said to the, to the servants of ba Balak, though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. Now, therefore, please, you also stay here tonight that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And verse 20, it says, And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them, but only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. So, and verse 21 says, So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Balaam, the donkey, and the angel. So this is verse 22. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary 
against him. Amen. So when I was reading this passage of scripture, you know, it was all going well until I came to verse 20. And you know, when uh, Balaam um, seeks the Lord and the Lord says to him in verse 20, if the man come to you, call uh, to come and call on you, rise and go with them. But only the word uh, which I speak to you, that you shall do. Then we see that, you know, Balaam goes with them in the morning. And then verse 22 says, you know, that God was angered by him going. And then it, it caused me to pause and reflect on verses 20 and 21. You know, the Lord had obviously given him permission to go. And then, you know, in verse 22, we see that the Lord was, was angered by him going. Because it says that then God's anger was aroused because he went. So it made me, you know, really reflect on what caused the Lord to be angered. You know, what was it about Balak's actions that caused the Lord to be angered? And when I reread the verses, what I realized was the Lord said in verse 20, If the men come to call you. Amen. Well, in, in verse 21, it just, you know, we are only told in scripture that he arose in the morning, saddled the donkey and went. So <clears throat> what I took away from this is, and the Lord has specifically told him, only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. So first and foremost, my brothers and sisters, you know, what we can really take away from this passage of scripture is God's word is uncompromising. Amen. It's uncompromising in the sense that Exactly as he speaks is what he expects us to do. So he had told Balaam, if they come and call you, then you go. Whereas, and the very next account we get is just saying that Balaam arose in the morning, sat his donkey and left with them. You know, there was no account for them actually coming to call him. And so I reflected this could have been why, you know, the Lord was, um, was angered by Balaam's um, action because he technically um, went against the word of God because he he and you know what that really reflected for me in in our walk with Christ in our own um, uh, individual walks with Christ is what we can often do is of the word of God you know we might read the word of God someone might speak the word of God to us but we can fashion it like Balaam fashion it in a way where we um, Take away from it what we want to take away from it. You know, and I reflect that perhaps the Lord saw his heart, knew his heart in the sense that, you know, the the, um, the things of this world, you know, the offers that Balak was giving him, you know, the, the prospect of um, recognition, the prospect of the worldly wealth, all these things that Balak was offering him as reward for um, cursing the nation of Israel, for doing what he wanted, was in a way luring him you know in a way um convincing his heart basically to do um something that was in actually in dis being disobeying uh, being being disobedient to the word of god amen and this is what uh, one thing that i took away from this is there is a billionic spirit that is rife in our churches and in our individual lives if we're not careful and the billionic spirit my brothers and sisters is a spirit that compromises on the word of God, like Balaam. A spirit that is easily, that is bribed. A spirit that is bribed to go against or to compromise the word of God. Amen. And there's a few things that really uh, allows the spirit, the Balaamic spirit to um, thrive or to exist in our lives. And I, I reflect that the first one is... It is bribed, you know, the, the Balaamic spirit thrives when we are bribed by our own desires, our own passions and our selfish ambitions. Because what then happens as a result of that, my brothers and sisters, is we can turn the word of God to suit our desires. We can uh, fashion the word of God to suit our passions. We can fashion the word of God in a manner. We can hear it, we can read it, but we will um, alter it just a wee bit. To, you know, to make it seem like we are obeying it. But in fact, what we're actually doing is we're partially obeying the word of God. But as we know, partial obedience to the word of God is still disobedience. When the God, when the Lord, just like how he did Balaam, when he spoke the command to Balaam saying, you do exactly as I tell you. And what he wasn't, you know, what he, what he wasn't saying to Balaam is obey half of it or just do, you know, what fancies you No. What he said to Balaam was, only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. That is telling us that the word of God is uncompromising. And it's uncompromising for a reason. 
There's a reason why the word of God is uncompromising because the word of God does not conform to the patterns of this world. The word of God does not conform to our evil desires, our evil passions, our selfish ambitions. No, the word of God is only in tune with the will of God. The word of God is uncompromising because it is what is in the best interest of God's children and God. Amen. So that is the reason why when God speaks a word through his, you know, through the, through, uh, speaks a command through his word, through his, through a servant, perhaps that he's standing your way, we are, to, we are to obey the word of God fully in its entirety, not just partially, not just an aspect of it, not fashioning it to suit, you know, whatever it is that we want it to suit. No, we are, the expectation from us as children of God is that we are so yielded and surrendered to his word that we are willing to obey the word of God as it comes to us in its entirety, like the Lord had um, expected of Balaam. But what Balaam did in this instance is he took the word of God, um, you know, he was bribed by his, um, his, his flesh, effectively. He was bribed by, you know, what is the physical manifestation of what the servants of Balak was telling him. He was bribed, perhaps, by the desires of his heart. He was bribed, perhaps, by the, his passions, his, um, you know, his agendas and his selfish ambitions. And that's what um, basically choked, that's what basically manipulated the word of God to um, appear to him to give him the authority to go uh, and compromise the word of God. Amen. And that's what happens in our lives when we are, you know, when our passions, when our desires, when our ambitions um, become more, you know, it, it stands, uh, ha has more weight than our fear of God or has more weight than the, our emphasis on the word of God and taking it as it comes to us in its entirety. That's what we will, what will happen in our lives, brothers and sisters, is we will be bribed by those things. And the second one is the opinion of men. Amen. That's another way that the Balaamic spirit can bribe us is by the opinion of men and the persuasion of men. When we out, you know, when our, when our fear of men, like I mentioned in my last video, when our fear of men outweighs our fear of God, the Balaamic spirit will rule in us because that will be what bribes us to compromise the word of God. That will be what bribes us to only take a portion of the word of God and not it in, in its entirety. Amen. Because what will happen is <clears throat> someone might speak something into your life that's not the will of God for you. But it will be, it will go with what your flesh wants. It will go with your selfish ambitions. It will be in accordance with uh, human understanding, human reasoning. But when you look at the gist of it, it's basically outside of the will of God for you. But because we have not learned to die to our flesh, because we have not learned, uh, have not taught ourselves to obey the word of God uncompromisingly, what you will often find is you will find yourself bending, you'll find yourself yielding to the opinion of men and instead of yielding to the, to the word of God. And then what you then effectively see you doing in your life is you will make compromises when it comes to the word of God. You will, you will find that your, um, your walk with the Lord will be conditional, conditioned to the things of this world, conditioned to the, what men tell you is right or wrong, conditioned to what the world tells you fits in and what doesn't. Amen. And that's, you know, that's a very dangerous place to be. And the third thing that I, um, I noted could be a way in which uh, the Balaamic spirit rules in our churches and in our lives is when the things of this world, when the treasures of this world, whatever that might be, money, luxury, cars, fame, whatever that might be, when that has, you know, when, when that becomes an importance, when that becomes uh, an esteem that we search for, when that becomes something that we yearn, my brothers and sisters, then the Balaamic spirit can really run riot in your life, in our churches. And what effectively then happens is the word of God is compromised because we are fashioning the word of God to suit whatever it is, you know, to suit our ability to get fame, to suit uh, the palates of perhaps those that we are preaching the word of God to, to suit the palates of those that we are in company with because they might uh, give us a certain social standing to, you know, we'll, we'll compromise the word of God in our lives and in and our ability to uh, heed and uh, ability to be, to be obedient to the word of God because we are bribed by the treasures of this world. So if it's money, then it's our pursuit of that money, our love of that money that strays us away from obeying the word of God fully and it's in, and in its entirety. Amen. And, you know, what I really found out from this is what we see in the example of Balaam is 
the word of God had a condition for him. Amen? And the condition was, only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. And what we found out is, as a result of that, that condition found out Balaam's condition. That the word of God, the, the condition of the word of God, found out Balaam's condition. And this is why I reflect God was not pleased when he left because the conditional, you know, that um, unconditional word of God with the condition that he had set found out Balaam's condition and the condition of his heart, perhaps. Amen. And quite often, this is exactly what happens to us. God's, God's word comes to us unconditionally, setting conditions that we need to meet, that we need to adhere to. And those conditions, my brothers and sisters, are the very things that discovers the conditions our hearts are at, that discovers where our spiritual maturity is at, that discovers our commitment to the word of God, that discovers our obedience to the word of God, my brothers and sisters. It's that unconditional word of God being given to you, being spoken to you, that you read, which sets the condition for how we are to live, the standards that we are to adhere to. And it's those very conditions from God, like how um, God was speaking to Balaam, the condition that he had given. Same conditions can be coming to us. Similar conditions can be given to us. When we read the word of God, it comes with a standard. Because, my brothers and sisters, when we live a life for God, there are conditions. There are standards that we have to adhere to. We are to not look like this world. We are to look like the word. And the word comes at a standard. The standard is Jesus, my brothers and sisters. And that standard is not an easy standard to maintain, but it's a worth it standard to maintain. And when we are not willing to keep up to that standard, not willing to work to that standard, my brothers and sisters, that's when we will see ourselves compromising on the word of God. That's when we'll see the Balaamic spirit running right in us simply because we have not taught ourselves to be uh, to obey the, uh, the word of God unconditionally. Because like Hebrews um, 4.12 reads, the word of God discovers our condition. And I'll just read Hebrews 4.12 for us, my brothers and sisters. Um, bear with me while I just turn with us to the book of Hebrews. And the word um, in Hebrews, it basically says, Hebrews 4, 12 reads, um, for the word of God is alive and active. 4, 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and the intents of the heart. Amen, my brothers and sisters. That is exactly what the word of God does. It looks past the exterior, straight into the interior, cuts through all the, the facade, cuts through all the fakeness, cuts through all the, um, uh, you know, the, the, the things that we, that man can see, you know, cuts through all the religiosity, all the legalism, cuts through all of that straight into our hearts and discerns our thoughts and our intentions. And from that place, that's when the, you know, the word of God will then convict us, will then let us know that the state of play of where we're at. And we'll, from, that, from that state, my brother and sister, is where the word of God will then tell us in what condition our spiritual lives are at. Amen? That's exactly what the word of God does, my brother and sisters. And that's what the word of God had done to Balaam. It is, it, it is that it had discovered the state of his heart. It, is it had discovered where he, you know, where he was headed. And what we then see is, as a result of the word of God discovering Balaam's condition, it says in verse 22, Then God's anger was aroused because he went, and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. Amen. So that's what the word of, you know, that's what God will also do in our lives. When we, you know, when we continuously compromise the word of God, when we are walking away from the will of God for us, what he will often do is he will send you know, an angel, like he sent an, um, Balaam, an angel of the Lord. He sent Balaam, an angel, to be an adversary to him. In a similar way, when someone's coming to us, you know, when, the, when someone's coming to us to give us a word that is against perhaps what we think is the vision, is the dream, is the goal that, you know, in our own understanding think this is what we should be pursuing. When, some, when the Lord is sending someone to you, to be an adversary to you, to be to to give you a different perspective, to give you godly perspective, to give you godly guidance, guidance and counsel, my brothers and sisters, he did because Balaam didn't. And what we see in the rest of uh, chapter twenty-two of Numbers is the angel of the Lord stood in Balaam's way. He was on a donkey, and the angel of God stood in his way. But because he was blinded, 
by his own desires and his own passions. He couldn't see the angel of the Lord, um, you know, standing before him, trying to basically saving him from himself is what the angel of the Lord was doing. And effectively, this is what God can do in our lives he is he will send things our way. He will send people our way to try and stop us from ourselves, to try and save us from ourselves, to try and save us from our own um, conditions, to try and save us from our own evil ways. But what, you know, what we will often do is we will stifle, we will reject them, we will reject the word that they're giving us, we will uh, reject the counsel that they're trying to give us simply because we have made up our mind what the law, we have made up our mind in terms of um is now not the will of God, you know, and we can pray the Lord's prayer. Um, your kingdom come, your will be done. Amen. We, we can all, we all know that by heart. We all recite that by heart. But my brothers and sisters, living that your kingdom come and your will be done is two different things. Reciting it and living it are very, two, two very different things from one another. Amen. So as much as we can say, Lord, your will be done. But if your will is still prevailing, your king, your, the little kingdoms that, re, that reign in your heart is still prevailing, then you cannot leave the will of God in your life. If you're, if you're still insisting on leaving out the little wills and the little um, uh, desires and passions and um, things of your heart, God's will cannot reign in your life if that's still what rules you. Amen. And I'm, I'm, I'm taken to uh, Galatians 5, which reminds us, walk in the spirit and you not gratify the flesh. And it, um, I think it says, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The flesh lusts against the spirit. The flesh is in direct opposition to what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. The flesh is in is in as is at war with what the the Lord wants to do to do in and through your life through the promptings, and He will use the Holy Spirit to speak into your life and to guide you. But your flesh will be at war against it. Amen. So if you've not learned to die to yourself, if you've not learned to uh, silence the flesh and make it, you know, um, uh, adhere. To the voice of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, what you will then be doing is you'll become an instrument. You'll become a vessel and uh, um, uh, a vessel that the, the enemy will use to achieve his purposes here on earth. And, quite, and what he will do with that is he will use the billion of spirit in you to bribe you in every single way to, allow, to um, ensure that you compromise the word of God. Because if the enemy can allow us as Christians to, or can enable us as Christians to compromise the word of God, my brothers and sisters, his work is done, okay? Because as much as we, are, we can profess that we're Christians, but if we're living a life that's compromised, if we're, li if we're compromising the word of God in our lives, my brothers and sisters, then our profession of being a child of God is profitable for nothing, is worthless. Because unless, when we say that we are children of God, we are, when we say that we are saved, we are born again, my brothers and sisters, the way that we live our lives, the fruits of our lives, should manifest the God that we are serving. Amen? We can't just sing any musunda na sachiso yena londa as I am my one kalunda nda zavuta chiko. Amen? And that's what I wanted to encourage us with today as well is just check the conditions of your heart. Amen. Check where you're at with that. And, you know, in terms of just for us as the church, amen, it's just being careful as well that, you know, this Balaam spirit is not what's ruling us as church leaders. It's not what, what's ruling us as congregation members in the church where even when, you know, church elders or our pastors are trying to um, correct us, trying to teach us by speaking us a now word, a now word that is, you know, um, that perhaps will discipline us is not easy for us to hear. And what I reflect is when you choose, you know, when you surrender yourself to the word of God and you choose to be rebuked by the word of God, you choose to be corrected, to be taught, you know, when you are, when you um, allow yourself to be easily taught by the word of God, whatever, he, whatever comes your way, even if it's a rebuke, your heart will gladly take it because I reflect in Micah 2, 7, it says, do not my words do good to him who walks uprightly. Amen. Because that's ultimately what the word of God seeks to achieve in your life. It's for your good. It's for the glory of his name and it's for the work of his kingdom. That's the word. The word of God will be will always be for our good. It will never be for our detriment. It might cause unpleasantness because we, you know, because of the sin in our lives. But ultimately, the, the purpose of the word of God, of God in our lives, the reason why it's uncompromising is because it is the one thing is the one sure thing that we have in our life that is working for our good. Amen. Everything else will fail us, but the word of God will never fail us. 
and you know what we really see as a result of a manifestation of the Bedanic spirit in our walk with God in our churches is something that I read in Micah chapter 3 verses and I'll read first you know when we continuously compromise the word of God when we continuously disobey the word of God what is written in Micah 3 4 will be what happens to us and it says then they will cry to the Lord but he will not hear them he will even hide his face from them at the time because they have been evil in their deeds my brothers and sisters it is a sad state when the Lord turns his face away from us amen so when he's giving us the opportunity when he's giving us the chance to repent and turn to him he did he did my brothers and sisters because um you know what it, it also raises in Micah chapter 3 because this is what um, Micah was talking about is evildoers people who um, professed and he was talking about um, evildoers in the sense of the Jews at the time just refusing to to walk righteously and he was also speaking about uh, prophets basically who professed you know uh, to profess to be speaking on behalf of God was in fact they were just speaking from their own selfish desires and one thing that he noted that I thought wow this is very relevant for our day and age now if we're not careful the Bilanic spirit could actually be running riot in our churches in our um, in our in our lives as Christians is in chap Micah chapter 3 verse 11 her heads judge for a bribe her priests teach for pay and her prophets divine for money amen we saw that this was a result you know this was something that was evident in Balaam's life that's why the Lord rebuked him sent an angel to be an adversary for him to save him from himself and if we're not careful my brothers and sisters this could be the very manifestation in our churches in our lives that our heads will judge for a bribe they will be easily bribed by the things of this world by their desires by their passions by the opinion of men they will also priests will also teach for pay they won't teach for the love of God. They won't teach for the love of the souls that they are meant to be winning. They'll teach only for monetary, for financial gain. Amen. And thirdly, prophets will divine for money. Fast people will come to you saying, fast is the Lord, but the Lord has not said it. Amen. So know, know your word. Know your God. Know the God that you serve. Fear him. And he will lead you into all truths. Amen. Thank you. I'll say a prayer for us. Hallelujah. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come before you this lovely day. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for the reminder, Lord God, that your word is uncompromising for our good, Heavenly Father. That as much as your word is uncompromising, it might not be pleasant for us at the time. It might rebuke us. It might um, correct us, Father God. It might unearth things for us that are not comfortable, Father God. But help us to always have hearts that are yielded and are surrendered and are willing to be taught, Heavenly Father. Hearts that are willing to take in whatever it is that you are, your word is telling us to take in. Whether it be us reading the word of God ourselves, whether it be you through um, you sending an angel, through you sending someone into our lives to speak your truth into our lives, Heavenly Father. Help us to be children of yours, Father God, that are so yielded in our hearts, in our walk with you, Father God, that we will hid and will be easily taught, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray that we will not become complacent, we will not become lazy, we will not become proud in our walk with you, Father, but we will be surrendered and fully yielded to your word and your directions, Father. And we just never forget to give you back all the glory and the honor and the praise. And I pray for every single person that's watching this video right now, Father, I pray that you'll extend your hand into their lives, Father God. Open the ears and eyes of their hearts and their minds. Enlighten the knowledge of their understanding, Heavenly Father, so that they're able to take in your word and your word will achieve the purpose with which you send it forth. In Je and we'll give you back all the glory, all the honor and the praise that's yours and yours alone, our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.